Um, okay, today we're going to do some pasta, fresh pasta in the, in the world. Uh, now, we got the fresh pasta is uh, divided probably in a couple of different variety. One is the field pasta, the other one is just the normal one. So your fettuccine goes in that category. Uh, your ravioli, tortellini and your and so on goes into the field pasta. Uh, also, what I would like to do, I'd like to uh, talk about the uh, the products that we're going to use in terms of what flour we use and why we're using that and where that flour comes from. Now, the, um, as you know, there are two different uh, varieties of wheat. You got the soft wheat and hard wheat. So the hard wheat they produce the semolina flour, while the soft wheat they produce your common flour. Now, the semolina flour is something that, uh, and the, the hard wheat is produced more or less from central of Italy to all south of Italy, while the soft one from central of Italy to north of Italy. And that makes a two different ways of making pasta. Now, soft pasta, uh, the soft wheat has got not much of uh, um, strength. As, uh, and if you make a pasta with, uh, with that, especially without using eggs, uh, you will find it's very washing. So what's happened uh, if you bite into it, it tend to be very soft. Uh, While well, if you're using the hard wheat one, so the semolina, when you bite into that, it's much harder. Um, I've been brought up to eating the one made without pasta, without, um, with the semolina, and um, that's why probably I prefer that, but it's up to you. Uh, so what is it, the ingredient that we're going to have? We need to have flour, we need to have eggs, and a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt. That's the basic ingredients yeah. of the past. And then uh, lots of, uh, in the old day, work of your hands in terms of uh, manipulate the dough and to manipulate, uh, to make the, the actually um, flat uh, dough and making your fettuccine or anything else. So, um, why we're using eggs in making the pasta is to give the strength to the pasta, to give the strength to the flour. So it becomes harder when you boil it, when you cook it. Um, for an instance, your uh, um, uh, hard pasta, one that, you know, the dry pasta you buy, that's made only with the semolina flour. As a, as a matter of fact, if you try to do that with the soft wheat flour, what's going to happen is going to disappear in your boiling water. Uh, okay, so now with the pasta, with the fresh pasta, also you can make uh, pasta which is uh, colorful. So you can use your pasta, you can use some of the, your beetroots to make a pink pasta. Uh, you can use some cocoa to make your brown pasta. Squid ink to make your uh, black pink pasta or the spinach to make your uh, green one. Or otherwise you can have um, the red one using capsicum or tomato paste. So there's a lots of different things that you can apply with. Um, what we're going to do today, we're going to do only a very simple basic one so you guys can enjoy and do it home. And, uh, and then when you start, when you've done that, you can uh, try to do the rest uh, as simple as it is. Um, so um, I'm going to make the dog now. So what I'm going to use, I'm using is a similar machinata, which is actually the semolino, but milled twice. So it's very fine and, uh, and some beautiful uh, free range eggs. So, Vincenzo, can I just ask, someone's asked you about uh, lasagna, what kind of flour you would use for lasagna? You can use either both. Yeah. Um, you can use both, both flours. Uh, depends on what sort of uh, mount filling you prefer. If you want one nice al dente pasta, use always the semolino. Uh, if you use it one a bit softer, then you can use the flat, the double zero. All right, so, yeah, please guys ask questions because that's the best way to understand what we're doing. So we're going to go on the other side and uh, preparing the, our pasta dough. So I'm going to, uh, and uh, usually what is uh, the amount of eggs per uh, 100 grams of uh, flour is about one egg per 100 grams of flour. 
Now, there is a different way of making pasta. For instance, if you go, there is a special pasta made up in Northern Italy, which is made with the, actually the double zero one, and they're using only egg yolks. So you go one kilo of flour for 40 egg yolks, which is something very special. And that is called tangerine, which is a, a particular, particular one. Uh, you can also make pasta with wine. Uh, what you do, you can make a reduction of the wine, and then will, um, and then you add that to your uh, um, to your dough uh, with the eggs, and you can make it going. So what I got there, I got about, probably about 200 grams of flour, a pinch of salt, and a little bit of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Would be nice for local extra virgin olive oil and the eggs. Now, in the old days, as I was saying to the people who use the hands to do it, you can still do it, not that you have to use the machine all the time. Uh, what do you do to make that? You make a nice little, uh, what we call the mount of the flour on the bench, make a hole in the middle, put beat your eggs, put your salt, a little bit of water, beat the eggs, put the eggs in the middle, and then start to uh, mix them gently, and that will uh, slowly, slowly prepare your dough. <laughs> now, it is important to understand the consistency of your dough, and that is the thing that you gotta look for. So, for an instance, I will show you in a minute what I mean about that. If you got your dough that is uh, with the amount of eggs the amount of flour you put in, um, you need a bit of extra moist. What you can do, you can add a little bit of cold water in it. And you said uh, add the eggs, which will make very hard to judge. Um, so you need your red dough and, um, until it's ready. As you can see, the machine is getting there. Now, just to let you know, you should use the hook instead of the pedal. I'm using the pedal because I don't like to go as low, and uh, the machine doesn't like me, and the people from Kitchen House, they don't like me either, because I'm breaking their machine all the time. But that's what you should use. So don't use this, but use the hook. Okay, so we go out though, then. As you can see, it's nice and dry. Okay, so we give another little uh, knock to the hands. Until it comes nice and smooth. And what do you do after that? You put your you cover. Either with a bit of glitter up, or with today that's what we need to do. Otherwise, before we used to put in a, underneath a bowl and keep on the bench. But today, what we do, we glitter up, make sure it's all covered, and we're going to put away in our fridge. Vincenzo, someone's asking still about the flour. Why would you use semolina and not the other Double flour? Zero. Yeah, double zero flour. For uh, it's a, it's about mount filling. So yeah. if uh, if you have the semolina one, when you bite into it, it's much harder and it stands to the cooking uh, much better. Why the double zero? Because it hasn't got enough coating in it. And when you bite, it, it becomes softer. Okay, so Thank that's why. Okay, so we leave the the flour the our pasta to rest for a little while, uh, usually about half an hour. Um, and then we're going to work, either we can work with the oil and beam, or we can use this beautiful machine, it makes our life much easier. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So in doing that, what we do is we mix up, the, we keep mixing the dough. So it's nice and smooth. And then we can perform and make any any sort of different uh, uh, pasta shape that we like. Uh, if, uh, for instance, 
I was question about flour. It's all about the flour. Can they use gluten-free flour? They probably wouldn't if they were Italian. It doesn't. It won't work. Uh, you can use some. You gotta uh, look for a specific gluten-free one that is um, for making pasta, uh, because as you understand, the gluten is what keeps the pasta together, uh, the dough together. If you take the gluten out, then it will break apart. So you really have to look for a very fine particular uh, flour that can allow you to use uh, the, um, for making pasta. Just on this note, I would like to tell you, um, gluten-free pasta you use, or gluten-free flour, you should use only if you really are and having problem with the gluten. Uh, because uh, those gluten-free flour, they are full of different ingredients that our body definitely would not like to have it. So just be aware of that. Uh, there is a lot of um, gum and uh, things to keep them together, to stick together. So it's not a very good thing to make that just for the fun of it. Uh, so you should use only if you really need it. Okay, so any more questions about the flour? Yes, there is. All right. But it, it, um, so someone's asking about for gnocchi, what mm -hmm. flour would you use? We are doing a gnocchi workshop um, with Vincenzo, but he can answer this one for you guys watching this one. Uh, usually I use the double zero for the gnocchi um, because you got the potato there. So you got lots of starch coming from the potato. Uh, and it is also a different thing. So with the gnocchi, you want something soft. Uh, you don't want the hard, uh, hard bite into it. And that's what we're using also the potato, we're using the ricotta, we're using other different ingredients to make a different gnocchi. Alright? Great, that's all for the moment. Alright, so say that we got half an hour gone, which is not, but we should do the show. So what we do, we cut our dough, we keep the other one covered, so we make sure that it doesn't dry out. Push out a little bit. So what? Why we using? Why we doing? We keeping the dough for half an hour to rest half an hour. That gives the time to the gluten to relax. So it's much more easier to work with. Uh, if you try to use it straight away, what well, as I'm doing now, it will find a bit more harder to work with. So as I say, we can do that either with the rolling pin, or we can use this machine that makes our life much easier. Now, on that note, I'm going to say that there is a lot of, uh, if you go from uh, someone that is really understanding his pasta, they will realize if the pasta has been made with a machine or with a rolling pin. You think, why? It's not about the thickness, it's not about the fact that you work the dough in a different way, uh, it's about the, the actually, uh, the material that we're using. With the stainless steel, what we do is the stainless steel very smooth surface. While if we uh, using the rolling pin, usually is uh, made of wood, which has got little uh, prickle things that they insert into the dough when you work in it and make a little hole in the dough. So when you toss your pasta and you're uh, with the sauce, the sauce goes inside these little holes and makes that much more um, beautiful to eat. So, are we going? Wait, so, so someone asked whether you let the dough rest in the fridge normally. Yes, yes we do. Yeah, normally. Yeah, normally rest in the fridge. Now, uh, with this machine here, uh, what do you do? Um, there is a set here. You can have a look from zero to number nine. That makes the difference from the two rules. So. Uh, the distance from the two rules you can adjust. So usually you start with number zero, which is the thickest one, to mix, keep mixing your dough. That's what I'm doing now. So you start with the number zero. And you keep rolling.
Now when you're rolling, just make sure you don't, you put always the, the part that's been pulled into the machine or this side, never this side, otherwise the hair will be compressed in there and will come out with a big bubble, making the shape of your dog pretty unusual. So, um, sorry for the stoppy start on the uh, Facebook, but it seems to be running quite well now. We will have the recipe, it is up online, so um, you'll be able to have a look at that afterwards. And we also have a pre-recording, so you'll be able to see that as a, um, on YouTube and Facebook. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to flour a little bit. You can see it is nice and smooth now, so I can start to reduce down the thickness. So we're going one at a time, so I'm going to number one now. Um, are you using semolina for the dusting on the... Yes. Yes. Yeah, we're using the sunflower that you use normally for your dough, used for dusting as yeah. well. So I'm keep going down, I'm number three now. Make sure that you, when you're doing this, there's always a bit of dust on it, so the surface stays nice and dry. Now, I'm um, going to... Sorry, Vincent, yes. what number dial did you start with? Number zero. Zero, and then we went on to... I'm number four at the moment, so I went number one, two, three, yeah. and now four. Work your way down. Away. Yeah, down and up. up. <laughs> now, some machine, they actually go the other way around. They start with number nine to go to number zero. Uh, but yeah, just to confuse us a little bit more. So I'm going to make this one to make the fettuccine. So it's, again, even with this one, it depends how you like your fettuccine, if you like them thick or thin. I like them pretty thick, I gotta say. So I will be stopping to number five on this machine. So what I'll do, I'll uh, have my dough down here. I'll leave it to rest a little bit. So it dries out a little bit. And in the meantime, I start to roll out the other dough. Let the dough rest in the fridge. Like, what can some things like? It can. Um, the only thing that can happen is not because it's going to not uh, to work. The, but it will uh, start to crack down a little bit um, because as in uh, relax the dough as in relax. Also, what you do, you get you see this nice and big one. If I didn't let the rest, it will shrink as soon as you put on the bench. It will shrink back. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do the one for making our ravioli. So the same as before, I start with number zero. I can see it's getting a bit humid. So you can see it's nice and smooth, so we can start to go down. 
Vincenzo, what kind of, what size roll would you go down to for lasagna and spaghetti? Uh, it all depends on your taste. Uh, for instance, I like them quite thick and probably I will stop to number six for lasagna. Uh, for spaghetti, I'm going to demonstrate that in a minute. If you do the, the square spaghetti or the spaghetti la guitarra, uh, probably what we going, which we got the, this particular attachment here, which works with, uh, you probably will uh, stop to number five. Um, for, uh, for ravioli, for instance, uh, we're going to go to very small number, probably seven or eight. Uh, because you don't want a thick pasta, but one nice and thin. Um, depends on the machine, sometimes it can even go up to number nine. So I'm to number five now. Hey. Yes. I think someone was asking whether you folded and ran it through the zero a few times, but is yes. that, yes. yes, so you just That's fold. You just, what you do with that, you're just uh, mixing the dough, you keep mixing the dough until it becomes nice and smooth, you can see the surface nice and smooth, mm -hmm. and then what you do, you just, uh, um, when it is nice and smooth, then you can start to go down with the numbers. Cool, and then I'm going to come in now, just yeah. um, so the machine that Vincenzo is using in Mercato and then the other one we stock at the moment which is online is an Atlas 150. There's a few different ones that we have. Um, do you find any easier or harder or oh, whatever look, we can more, more, uh, <laughs> more or less they are all the same. Yeah. And, uh, I think the, the difference is the, how long they will last and uh, the, of course if they are heavier and they are much, you know, much stronger. more and stronger. They're, they will last you longer. Yep. The light one will last you probably a bit less, but it's talking about yep. the big And the KitchenAid also has an attachment which we sell. Um, if you have a KitchenAid, there's a pasta yeah. attachment on yep. that as well. Yes. So. All right, so I'm to number six at the moment. I'm probably going down to number seven to make my ravioli. Say so, yeah. yeah. So I, th I think this uh, the Mercato is quite a good one. Um, yes, as you can see, nice and thin. Okay. So after you fold the uh, pasta, which way do you put it in the machine? You put always uh, opposite to the folder uh, on when the folder is done. So, for an instance, just to show exactly what I mean, if you fold your dough this way, you always start from this side, so or, or otherwise on this side. Yeah. Never this side. Cool. So it's, it's usually the, where there is a fold. Is a folder. That's the yeah. fold. Yeah. 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 Uh, you can you go this way or this way, uh, just to try to make a square, rather. Uh, but yeah, you, you don't. You won't go this way because what happens if you go when opposite to the folder, uh, the bubbles of air will form there and will make your sheet out of the square. Perfect. Someone okay. was asking how long the fresh pasta lasts for and how you would store it. Okay, it depends. That's uh, you can. Um, the easiest way is to store in the freezer, so you can freeze your pasta after you're done. I, and that will last you the usually three to six months. Um, if uh, if uh, you can also store in your fridge, but to do that you need that your dough is uh, uh, very very. Um, yes. It's okay. <laughs> uh, your dough is uh, very very uh, dry. Um, otherwise, it's so it's going to. All right, so now to do the ravioli, what we can do, we can use the whole method that I'm using, my little cutter here. 
or otherwise what we can do we can you can use those uh, um, particular stuff that they're selling also here at the kitchen warehouse which is the ravioli um, metal sheets so what you do you put your dough on top of it you fill it up with your con uh, with your um, filling and then you, you wet it out all around and then you put your uh, um, other sheets on the top you go with the rolling pin over and that's all done uh, I'm using this old method which is cutting my dough now what I got here as a filling I got some pumpkin and uh, ricotta filling that you will find on the recipe um, and what I'll do I'll put a little uh, like a walnuts in there and then I will wet the corner a little bit with a bit of water you can use uh, egg white then you fold it and then you close it with your fork so that's your nice little ravioli there so I'm going to do this four three times more We'll make it a little bit and we can use it and um, in a minute I'm going to show you how to make also the tortellini um, yes do you have to um, dry the pasta before you freeze it no 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 what you do you can go directly as it is there uh, in the freezer now when you freeze your pasta you make sure that you put in a flat layer and you don't cover when you start to freeze it after it's frozen, then you can uh, change and uh, put in your bag and, put the, and, uh, and cover up if you like. Um, now, when, when you're using your frozen pasta, make sure that you go from, freezer, from the freezer into the boiling water straight away. Uh, you don't want to um, melt down before or to the frost before you cook it. So directly from the freezer into the boiling water. Boiling. Uh, too high. Too high. Much as it is? Yeah, too much. Too much? No, yeah, yeah, no idea. Not really. Okay, so off we go. We go out. The ravioli ready here. I'm going to I'm also having a lesson on how to uh, work induction stoves. <laughs> it makes two of us. I don't like those things. Oh, sorry, I turned that off. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> so we wet a little bit. And you can do this with a brush if you, you, you know, you like. So as I said before, you fold in, go like this, and then you close it. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. So cool. Um, so just a few people are asking about getting the machines online. Um, you can do click and collect in store. We're getting more online soon. <laughs> but yeah, click and collect um, from the stores and there is plenty around in stores. All right. So this will be Joe's lunch for today. Yeah. Someone's sending you a kiss from Italy. Oh. Do you know Patricia? Uh, Patricia? Patricia? You probably yeah. know a few. Oh, yeah. 
It's amazing, isn't it? If we're doing a uh, total lean here, what we do exactly the same as we did before. So we close this one up and then we turn this one around our little finger. A little bit of water there. Close it and twist it. And this is our beautiful little tortellini there. So, as I say, you close it. You don't need the fork to do this job. You put it around your finger. Bit of water there. Squash properly. And then turn. When you turn like this, what's happening? The door will keep closed. So the, the actually feeling will not go out. I'm going to show some people up close. Yep. There we go. I think I can probably. Oops. <laughs> there we go. They look beautiful. All right. These so. Ones back here. Now I'm going to make uh, the fettuccine with the with the dough that we with the sheet that we did before. So this is nice and dry now. So going to cut to a length. Now remember that the pasta, when it cooks, it will extend from about 10%. So don't cut too long. Now, if we haven't got this attachment for the machine, you got just this machine, how are we going to make our pasta, our fettuccine? So what do you do? You just fold this one like this, you roll it like that, you roll from the other side, and that's what my mom and my grandma used to make it. Because that the rolling pin only, no machine. And so you cut it. So you have your fettuccine. Then you can make a tiny one, which is called a tagliolini or spaghetti la guitarra. We can have a very large one, which is the pappardelle. So what you do then, you just unfold them. Off you go. And there we go. So go all different size for what we need. Just make sure that there is a plenty of flowers around it um, because you don't want them to stick to each other. How thick do you do fettuccine traditionally? Should, uh, I, should I show them? The yeah, have a look. I'm eating this so I'm allowed to touch it. <laughs> so can, is that a good frame on that one? How yep. thick it is? Yeah. So that looks to me like about a centimeter. Is that right for fettuccine? Uh, millimeter, maybe. A millimeter? No, as in as in. Thickness. Oh, in a thickness, yes. Yeah. 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 And probably a millimeter as a as a thickness. Yeah. And then we had a pappardelle. Pappardelle, which is. So this is pappardelle. That looks about two centimeters. Yeah, about yep. two centimeters. Two centimeters. Yeah. And this is a very usually served with the um, wild. Meat. Wild meat. Yeah. Okay, now if we're using the machine, so what we're going to do, we're moving. This machine here has got two attachments. One is for the fettuccine, the other one is for the tagliolini or spaghetti like So we move to this one here and off we go. We put our dough to it. Oh, look how easy that is. <laughs> Much easier than before, isn't it? There you go. Beautiful. And here again. So you pick it up with your hands, put together, stick them together there, put a bit of flour on the top. Um, can you do angel hair on the machine? On that one day, probably not as such. There's so much shelly on this one. Yeah. 
But Angela had a very, very thin. Very thin. Yeah. So the, this machine here won't be able to. Um, but I'm showing you the, the actual spaghetti alla guitar or the square one. So I got the, now you don't throw anything away when you do the pasta dough, okay? So here is you see, I'm using the whole part of the dough and mix with the new one. I go in the machine to number zero again and I'm starting to rolling over. Now because we got two different consistency there, what's happening? is that um, you will see that your dough is going to break in pieces as you can see here okay don't worry about it just keep mixing so you fold in and you go to the machine again so is this your off cups that you're doing someone's just yeah. asking about off cups exactly that's yeah. exactly what i'm doing so you mix your off cut with the, the other piece of dough and you keep folding and mixing. Um, do you have any recipes for pasta without eggs? If you have an allergy to eggs, is yeah, that you can. But the, um, in that case, you should use the semolino, only semolino. I don't you try to use the double zero because that will uh, dissolve in your water. Um, so yeah, what do you do? You just use water instead of uh, flour, then eggs. To give it the moisture, you use water, yeah. um, no eggs, and only use semolina, did you semolina, say? Semolina, yeah. Semolina because if you use only. a double zero, what's happening, uh, most likely when you try to boil, it tend to dissolve and become a little mushy. Okay, cool. So only semolina if you've got no eggs in it, um, no yeah. double zero. So you, as you can see, eh, it starts to change from all broken pieces to a single one, which is more or less the same consistent, consistency. As you can see, that is nice and beautiful now, all the same. So we put a bit of uh, dust with a bit more flour and we start to go down. So number one. Number two. saying before I'm going to show you how to make the uh, spaghetti alla guitarra. Why it's called spaghetti alla guitarra? Isn't that interesting? Spaghetti alla guitarra, you know the guitar in Italian? Okay, this uh, pasta is actually come from the Abruzzi region of Italy and what they had, they had a, a rectangular uh, frame like this one with all guitar strings attached. So what you do, you get your dough on the top of it and then you go with the rolling pin and you will get all the pasta underneath. Uh, we're going to do this one with the with our machine but that's how tradition is done and again the difference in the mount filling doing with the machine or doing with the actual guitar is a completely different. Okay so I stop to number four because it's a square spaghetti so as you can see And then beautiful, look at that. That's with the flower. Good one. That looks amazing. 
Isn't that beautiful? Here's one of my favorite pasta. There we go. So as you, as you can see, we have different cut for pasta here. Pop that there so people can see it. So we got the spaghetti la guitarra, fettuccine, fettuccine, tagliolini, and uh, pappardelle. They look beautiful. I love this one. Yeah, it's beautiful. They're all lovely. Yeah. They come through so easy on the machine too. That's it. They know how to make pasta eventually. <laughs> all right. So now next step is probably to make some sauce. So. I'm going to make a couple of very, very simple sauce. The first one is going to be made with uh, for the our ravioli. So we'll have just a little bit, you see my beautiful herbs here that I picked up this morning from my garden. So the first one we're going to do is just very simple. We're using sage and butter and um, So we've got a nice flour of butter in there. Now this sauce is very simple, but you need to make that properly if you want to have a very good result. Otherwise it becomes only, the flavor will be only fat. So we need to cook our butter to what they call brown butter. So see if I can work this stove up. So I've got the butter there, I got my sage. And what if for my water to boil? Now the essential part when you do your pasta is actually the boiling water has to be to the hard boiling and also has to have enough salt in it. Usually what we say the salt the, the water should taste like the sea water. So don't be scared of putting salt in it, uh, because otherwise you're going to lose flavor. So just waiting until our water starts to boil, while our butter is melting. Put the number five, I don't know. I, I, you know go. how to work this better than I do. <laughs> okay, so that's hot, that's as hot as it'll go. And this one's a hard boil? Yeah, uh, there's a boil. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. So, as mentioned, um, just while we're waiting for the to heat the up, they will be online. Um, they're on our blog, the recipes from Vincenzo. and. Um, and also you'll be able to also have a look at it um, in a pre-record for those who missed the start on Facebook. So. Also, I'd like to take this opportunity to say that uh, as a catering business, we offering our um, business offering a delivery to your place for uh, uh, Easter, which is a full meal for four to six people. So if you log on our Facebook page, please have a look what we're doing. I think it's a great thing to do and it. What's your uh, Facebook? Is it just Il, Il Paiolo? Yeah, Il yeah, Paiolo. Oh, oh, yes. Il Paiolo. And um, also another thing, if you can make your pasta, or if you go problem to get the, the pasta machine, in the next few weeks, we're going to have a specialized area of our catering business that will do only homemade pasta. So all, everything is going to be done by hand. Uh, no much machine involvement yep. and um, with a special feeling coming from most from traditional Italian recipes. Delicious. So everyone hear that? There's, there's pasta aplenty from Il Pale Mo. But I reckon you can make <laughs> You it can now. make your own first. <laughs> Try yours first and then you get some of ours so you can compare. Okay, we're nearly there. Have you, you do pizza as well, someone's just mentioning? Yes. We do pizza, we do catering, we do wood fire oven, which is the most, the most of the work that we do. Okay, so, 
salt plenty in the water. Don't be scared. See if it can come up. And so we, as soon as it starts to boil up again, we're going to put a ravioli in there. There we go. So that should be a strong boil, should it? Yeah, yeah, you can see the bubble coming up. So the other thing is you never cook your pasta with the lid on. Oh, that's something. Do you ever put oil or salt <laughs> in your water? Italians kind of... No, oil. Now, what do, you, what do you do? You put oil in there, what's going to do it? Absolutely nothing. nothing. You just waste some good oil. You don't, definitely don't need to. That, do you? Would you put it in with the fettuccine to separate? No, the, the oil doesn't separate them. What's happened when they are cooked and then you want to cool them down for later on, then when you add your oil in it, or you add a bit of olive oil in your fry pan to actually um, give some flavor to it. But you never waste your good olive oil in the, in the boiling water. Sauces other than tomato sauce that you would recommend? Oh, look, you, you got so many that you can do it. You can do it with your sausages, you can do it with your mushrooms, you can do it with uh, so many different ones. And, um, and for instance, you know, each cut of pasta or each filling, it will attract a different sauce. So, for instance, this one, which is done with the ricotta and, uh, and pumpkin. The best way of having is with butter and sage. But if you do a filling with, uh, uh, say, with the spinach and ricotta, you can use a tomato sauce. If you do your filling with meat, you can use a meat, uh, a sort of a meat sauce to it. Um, you can use vegetables, you can use a lot of it. Have, uh, have a look at the, at the butter now, it starts to brown a little bit. Now you will see that it's going to change the color. The moment it changes the color, we're going to put the ravioli back in. If I put the ravioli in as it is now, you will find it's uh, only very buttery and very fat in the flavor. While the other way, what happens, all the, um, all the part of the butter which is not clear, uh, it will burn and that will give a beautiful, nice, nutty flavor. So we should be able to see that it's changing the color. So I'm getting my ravioli in there. With a bit of water. Now, put a little bit of water all, always on your uh, pasta, when you, from the boiling water on your pasta, because that's what it does, it gets your sauce to stick to your pasta. How long did you cook the fresh ravioli for? Uh, probably one minute. One minute? And that's all depends how thick your pasta is, so you can still cook, you have to still cook al dente, so whatever you do. Alright, so here we go. That's our ravioli ready to be served.
Here we go. So what you can also do on that one, add a little bit of uh, Parmesan cheese, but personally I would prefer without it because you can feel the beautiful pumpkin. There you go. Smells really good too. I guess we'll taste better than what it smells. Okay. You can have it a go. Well, come on, Joe. Okay. I'll come around here. Twist my arm to try it. I don't know if I can do this elegantly on screen though, that's the only problem. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. I haven't eaten pasta in a little while, so it's delicious. <laughs> Thank you. Alright. So our next sauce is just a very simple one, the tomato sauce. So what I got here, I got some extra virgin olive oil. Again, now pan. Uh, you can actually use garlic or onions. I do prefer onions for this particular sauce um, because it makes the sauce sweeter. So what we do, we get the onions to sweat a little bit and I got here some nice beautiful uh, cher Roma cherry tomato they're beautiful and sweet of course if you get that summertime it'll be much better because the, all the sweetness from the sun goes into them but so seasonality is very important all right so as you can see our onions are sweating themselves along so I'm going to put my tomato in there. It's a very quick sauce. So, you know, people say, oh, to make a pasta, homemade pasta takes a long time. It's actually, you can make your pasta with your sauce within half an hour and you get your meal ready. So it's, uh, I think it's a, it is very quick meal to make it. And most of all, will take much less doing this then going to the takeaway shop if we are still allowed to go there. So our next ingredient is the beautiful basil, which always reminds me of summer. Is that from your garden as well? Yes, it is. All the herbs, I do all my herbs. Oh, I love it. I love my garden. Pinch of salt. That will take about probably three, four minutes to cook this sauce. And in a minute, I'm going to put the fettuccine in there. Vincenzo is giving us an extra long uh, workshop. The Instagram we will restart, just so don't leave us. We'll restart it just for this very last minute. There's about a minute to go, and then we'll, we'll restart it again. So. <laughs> Alright, here we go. I'll put the tuna going in. So how you test if your fettuccine are ready? So what you do, you cut it, have a look in the middle of it. If it's all the same color, that means they're ready. If you can see a little uh, white line in the middle, it needs to be cooked a little bit longer. This one will take another 30 seconds. So 
So we've got a few people just joining in for the very end of our thing. We just restarted it because um, we've just gone over the hour on Instagram, but it will be posted um, on Instagram and on Facebook and on YouTube as well. And the recipes are also on our blog. So anyone who's just signed in, you're just catching the end of our live workshop. Um, but all the information will be there. There we go. Now, as I was saying to you before, Joe, this is the time that you need a bit of olive oil in there. And of course, what we do, you put a little bit of water from your cooking pot. There we go. Okay, exercise. but unfortunately you can't at the moment but you can make it at home and we hope you do um, we will be as mentioned posting this um, afterwards on both Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and we look forward to you guys tuning in um, all through the week with all our different we've got expert tips on particular days but um, tune into our socials and enjoy um, this homemade pasta at home Thank you very much, Thank Vincenzo, very much. and we'll see you again in store, and if not, um, he'll be doing gnocchi in a few weeks' time as well, so you'll get to see that. Thank you. See you later, okay, guys. See you, Bye. guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.